Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey, we're back. Coming at you from the Ask Leffy Podcast Studio. How you doing, Dan? I'm doing good today. Thanks, Greg. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about boiler protection valves today. Uh, obviously, you're not going to see them much at all. You shouldn't see them at all on any of your modulating condensing boilers. No, you won't find them there. But, you know, there are a lot of mid-efficient boilers out there that are still continue to be installed. And there's certainly applications for them. Yeah, anything that's a copper fin tube, cast yep. iron, whether it's fired off of oil, natural gas, LP, or even wood boilers for that matter. Right. Well, and you look at, you know, high temperature systems, like you mentioned, you know, the, the copper fin tube or cast iron, you know, baseboard or radiators, you know, those are systems running, you know, 160, 180 degrees or, or so. And, you know, you, you can put a condensing boiler on them. Yeah, absolutely. And it's done all the time. But, but I mean, you, you really you, don't get the, the efficiency out of a condensing boiler unless it's running in that condensing mode. Right. And you want to avoid those situations when you've got an older cast iron boiler. Right. You know, or copper fin tube boiler. Because... You know what happens when they condense. It makes a mess. Right. Yeah. So you need, you know, you look at your lower temperature applications and, you know, that's where, you know, the modulating boilers are a great fit. Um, but initially trying to heat a system up or heat a building up, you know, you don't, you're right. You don't want to risk condensing that cast iron right. boiler. You're, you're going to throw a shock at that boiler. Right. You will. 100% every every day of the week. Yeah. So we, but we have a couple options for that. Yes, we do. We have the 280. And the 281. Yeah. 280 being a basic, just thermostatic element in it. Uh, yeah, thermostatic bypass. Bypass valve. Essentially, it's a mixing valve. Right. For To prevent condensing. Yeah, those are great. Two options on those. You know, you typically you're, you know, we always say your cast iron boilers, you don't want to return water back to them below 130 degrees or that block will start to condense. Right. Um, so we have two options. We have 130 degree and 140 degree option. Right. And then we've got kind of a Swiss Army knife approach that incorporates a pump in the 281 series. Right. Yep. The 281 is going to have the pump built into it. The 280, you're going to have to have you're going to have to size and add your pump. Right. Um, but that 281 will have the pump built into it. Provides you know similar protection, similar applications. Um, 130 or 140 degree option as well. Right. Now. We also have replacement cartridges available. So some will actually call and order a different cartridge if they want a lower or a higher temperature. Yeah, we have a cartridge, 115 degree cartridge, and we have 160 degree cartridge. And then we have replacement 130 or 140 degree cartridges. Perfect. So you can take them apart, you can maintain them, you can replace the cartridge rather than replacing the whole valve. Uh, when we look at the two options, you know, the 280 is going to be a higher flow than the 281 because the 281 has the pump sized and in, in installed with it. Uh, the 280, you're going to be pro providing your pump. Um, it's not going to have a check valve in it like the 281 would have. Um, so it is a higher flow option. Yeah. You don't have the resistance of a pump being in the way, a check valve. Right. So that 280 without the pump is going to flow a bit more. Right. So when you look at how they work, I mean, they're designed, you know, again, for boiler protection. So when you first initially fire your system up, that water is going to be starting to heat up. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be cooler water. So the bypass is going to be open in the bypass mode. So it's going to be right. taking that supply water, running it right back through the return side of the boiler, creating a small loop, which is going to start to come up the temperature relatively quick. Right. Um, when you look at that again, 130 or 140 degree thermostat, we'll say, you know, you pick the 140 degree thermostat. So you have the 140 degree element in it. Once that water temperature hits 140 degrees, that bypass is going to start to open up and send that water out to the system and continue to bypass. So it's going to do both. It's going to say, okay, the water is above the condensing mode for the boiler, condensing temperature. Right. So it's going to start to open up to your system. Right. So it's actually essentially moving up 
and pinching that bypass loop between the supply and the return off and allowing it to flow more out to the system and come back through the return right. of the boiler. Yeah, exactly. Um, once that water gets 18 degrees above that, it's going to be completely open to the system, so it's going to close the bypass off. Correct. So that 140-degree thermostat. At 158, that baby's going to be closed off. It's not going to be pulling pulling water from the return or from the supply to the return anymore. It's just going to be all system water. Yep. Now it's going directly out to the system. So right. you've just protected that boiler from getting return water coming back and condensing. Exactly. Um, and then that 281 is going to work in a similar similar. Yeah. Operation. Similar operation. So we get a lot of questions about piping these, don't we? We do. Yep. And pump locations. Pump location is big with these. Honestly, it's got to be on the return, pulling water, pushing water back into the boiler, pulling water through the valve. Yeah. We have a nice diagram, you know, in in the install manual showing the operation, but Greg's right. You got to have that. You got to have the pump pulling through the mixing valve. So it's going to pull down through the bypass pumping through the boiler as that bypass starts to close it's going to be pumping now out to the system and coming back through right and we've got guys out there that want to kind of buck the system so to speak Mm -hmm. well it's not gonna i can't pipe i i I don't have the room to pipe it you're gonna have to unfortunately make room for (laughs) this to work properly right Uh, i've I've had a handful of guys well i piped it in the other way because that's the way it worked you know i had room for it and it doesn't work. Well, there's a reason why it's not right. working. It's it it's not going to if if you don't pipe it the way we show you in the diagram. Right. Yep. Yeah, it's not going to sense and register temperature and, and react as it should if you're not pulling water through that valve. Sure. And But this is where the 281 kind of makes it a little easier for, it does. for an installer is the pump is there where it needs to be and it, it's going to work properly. When installed properly, but you don't have to worry about sizing the pump. Correct. Yep. But again, lower flow applications because, you know, you're, you're going to have some, you know, flow limitations with the thermal block and that factory installed pump where the 280 is going to have uh, less restriction. It's going to work at a higher flow rate. Right. Realistically, well, I think we're looking at about 10 gallons a minute, two feet ahead with, with that 281. Yeah, we On are. high. Yep. On high speed. So, and again, you're not, you don't need to move a high velocity of water here anyway. You're just pulling a little bit out to try and prevent condensation in that boiler block. Right, exactly. Protect that, protect that system. Man, I can, I can think of one boiler I would have loved to have seen that on. I spent hours once, I think I was probably three or four years into being a service technician. And I go to this house, very strange people. I've never seen so many antiques stuck in one area and their boiler was down. Yep. I go down in there. They, they, you know, don't look, don't touch. Okay. Go in (laughs) from now on. You're going in and out the Pilco door. All right, fine. Cause I don't think I would have made it out of that house without tripping and falling on something. Right. Go down into the basement. He moved all of his antiques from around the boiler. Clearly it had not been serviced in a long time. And they keep the temperature really low, like 60 degrees in the house. Right. And it's all cast iron radiators with an oil-fired Burnham oh, boiler. Boy. Yeah. So you know where this is going. Yep. It kept tripping out on reset. The the, the classic, mm-hmm. well, I only pressed the reset button twice. <laughs> sure you did. Sure you did. Sure you didn't. <laughs> twice, twice after the first two or three, you, four times. You pushed you did it, it twice before I got here yeah. and it didn't start, so that's why I'm here. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So I go in, and this was the first experience I ever having to use a soot saw. Oh. Uh, yeah. So I start to de-jacket the boiler, mm-hmm. and, I mean, the s- smoke pipe was nothing but soot. Yep. I get into it, pull the hood off, and I can't see through the heat exchanger. It's literally like tar. Right. So I call back to the shop, tell them, hey, I'm going to be a couple hours here. What couple hours? We don't have that kind of time. You know, it's... <sighs> It's, what do you do? What do you do? I mean, it's 20 degrees it out. It takes that time. It's the first cold snap of the year and we're running around. Right. We're, you know, we got four techs and we're all busy, 10 deep. Yep. So look, well, see if, see if they're willing to replace it. Uh, <laughs> well, one, they don't have natural gas in the house. It's all oil. Yeah. So we're going to be coming back with another oil boiler. That's not going to get maintained, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk to them. That was a, a hard no. 
no go. You're not replacing this boiler. Right. So, well, and it wasn't that old of a boiler, if I recall you saying. Yeah, it couldn't have been more than maybe five, six years old, yeah. but not maintained ever. Right. So I go at it with a soot saw to get this nasty stuff out of it. Finally get to see in daylight in, in probably two of the sections out of the five sections mm-hmm. that were in this, in this boiler. And the homeowner's coming down. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? No. I mean, this is this is what it's going to be. It's going to yeah, take a long time. Twenty five percent done. Yeah, it, it takes a long time to get that out when it's that. It's literally like tar. It's, right. It was sticky. The, the the soot vac hardly did anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I took the, the top layer of dry stuff off, and the rest was just goo. Yep. So that's where one of these valves would have helped prevent right. that. That and some some maintenance. Obviously, yeah. Obviously, something was out of tune with that, with yeah. the combustion side. Right. So. But no, you're right. I mean, you start seeing, you know, five, six, eight year old boilers, heat exchangers failing, mid efficient boilers, you know, with those heat exchangers failing, I mean, pretty good odds. It's you're condensing that block. Right. And, and th- those things will last forever. They will. Installed and maintained. Correct. It's crazy how long a, a cast iron mid efficient boiler will last. So when you start seeing a you know heat exchanger failures or multiple heat exchanger failures, pretty good odds you're condensing that block. Yeah. And that can lead to not just sooting up and you know problems with combustion and high yep. CO levels, but I've even seen it where it causes the the, the block to pop or right. crack yeah. and leak. So by all means, I mean this is a huge a huge deal to, to install one of these, I think. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Well, I think that covers it pretty well, Greg. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, you got any more questions? Feel free to hit us up. Yeah, give us, give a, us a call, call anytime. We appreciate your calls. Send us an email. We're happy to chat. We're here for you. That's right. All right. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.